Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you should know of as an investor. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, stocks have been ticking higher, as you can see on screen here, and particularly, we want to focus in on the S&P 500, which recently set a new record. The S&P 500 reached over 5,000 points, which is a new milestone for the stock market index. The S&P 500 is a phenomenal stock market benchmark, and I personally am heavily investing into the S&P 500 right now, even though it's at all-time highs. And I do this by investing into ticker symbol VOO and ticker symbol SPY. The reason why the S&P 500 and the general stock market is moving higher, which has created a phenomenal payday for investors, is due to very strong company earnings reports. We even saw a singular company named Arm jump to $113 per share after surging by around 47% in their share price. However, recently the company has pulled back by around 10%, so please be aware of that. The general enthusiasm that we are seeing surrounding the stock market is very good in my opinion, and I can't wait to see the general stock market go higher in the near term. We also have Google news, because Google recently renamed its Bard AI chatbot to Gemini, and they released a dedicated Gemini app for Android users. I personally don't think this is enough good news to move Google's share price, ticker symbol G-O-O-G, or ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L, which actually represents Alphabet, which is the parent company to Google and YouTube. However, in general, you should still be aware of this news update, and I love Google as an investment and as a company. That's why I personally hold them in my portfolio. Next Next up we have Flutter which is the parent company to FanDuel and DraftKings back in the news as we approach the Super Bowl. As of right now, 68 million Americans plan to wager approximately $23 billion on the results of the Super Bowl. In recent years, we have seen a large influx of sports betting which has surged ever since the Supreme Court struck down a federal ban of sports betting back in 2018. And according to recent metrics from the American Gaming Association, they project that sports betting top to $100 billion last year, and this industry is expected to top $200 billion by 2025. Flutter, which is the parent company to FanDuel, which is a sports betting app, and DraftKings, which is another sports betting platform, they both control approximately 70% of the United States online sports betting market. Both of these companies dominate their respected segments of the market, and I believe that investors would be wise to take advantage of this. After all, investing into DraftKings and Flutter, which is the parent company to FanDuel, is much safer than actual sports betting, and this way you can market more as an investment instead of gambling. But no investment is with out risk, so I would highly recommend you always do your own research before you make any investment decision. Next up in the news, we have NVIDIA, which plans to create custom chips for various customers. NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, is setting up a new business unit which is aimed at designing custom chips for cloud computing companies. And if you didn't know, NVIDIA's chips are used in artificial intelligence. That's why companies like OpenAI, who is the maker of ChatGPT, and other companies like Microsoft, Alphabet, and Meta Platforms are all racing to get a share of NVIDIA's chips. We see a vast multitude of companies competing in the AI arena, however NVIDIA seems to be the true winner here. On top of NVIDIA's general success, NVIDIA has also privately met with Amazon, Meta Platforms, Microsoft, Google, OpenAI, and a few other companies to discuss making custom chips for them. This is going to expand NVIDIA's overall market, and it will also allow them to infiltrate a $30 billion custom chip market, which is phenomenal news for NVIDIA shareholders. NVIDIA dominates the market for high-end AI chips chips, and that's why they have a market share of around 80% for this particular segment. And this has helped their stock price surge by 213% just over the last year. And because NVIDIA is looking to expand their existing market, this is going to move their share price even higher. As of right now, the data center custom chip market is expected to increase to as much as $10 billion this year, and then double in 2025. Therefore, even if NVIDIA seems expensive right now, there is still further upside opportunity left in their share price. 
Speaking about artificial intelligence stocks, let's talk more about Super Microcomputer, Applied Materials, and C3 AI. What surprised me recently about these companies is that their share prices rose very dramatically even though there was no company-specific news to cause this surge. The share prices of these companies jumped between 6.1% to 6.9% even though none of them have received an actual catalyst which should have moved their share price higher. However, when we zoom out, the general AI segment of the stock market did get a recent boost from two different catalysts, and here's the first one. Recently, the Biden administration announced a $5 billion investment in a public-private research and development consortium for chip makers. The aim of this consortium is to accelerate innovation in the United States workforce development in chip making with an onus on AI chips. Although this news was not beneficial to one singular company, this could be taken as good news for Applied Materials. Applied Materials is one of the world's largest semiconductor equipment providers, so clearly this would resonate as very good news for this company. As of right now, we don't know if Applied Materials is directly involved in the government consortium, however it is possible that Applied Materials could receive subsidies for some of this spending. The second catalyst that you should be aware of is that according to the Wall Street Journal, Sam Altman, who is the the founder and CEO of OpenAI, which brought us ChatGPT, is seeking between $5 to $7 trillion in funding for a massive overhaul of the global semiconductor manufacturing industry. Now, although I personally don't think this is going to happen, because $5 to $7 trillion is literally an unheard of amount of money, this is causing a lot of hype in artificial intelligence stocks, such as Super Microcomputer. For context, Super Microcomputer has carved out a niche for themselves as the go-to server platform for AI infrastructure, and they have been one of the best AI stocks to buy right now. Therefore, this good news in one way or another was beneficial to Applied Materials as well as Super Microcomputer. But what about C3 AI? Currently, it's unclear how this news positively impacted C3.AI, but in general, I think a rising tide lifts all boats, so if we get good news in regards to artificial intelligence, therefore the majority of artificial intelligence stocks are also going to rise. So if you are looking for some of the best AI stocks to buy right now, I would highly recommend you look further into companies like Palantir Technologies, Super Microcomputer, Applied Materials, NVIDIA, AMD, and a few others which we will talk about in our next video. But we are not done with our stock news updates yet, and you should know as an investor that Expedia stock recently dropped like a rock today, falling by around 17% in their share price. So let's talk about what happened. Expedia Group operates a travel booking platform, and their ticker symbol on the stock market is EXPE, and they have recently dropped like a rock due to their fourth quarter earnings. What surprises me is that their numbers for their revenues and earnings actually weren't that bad, and honestly, they were pretty good. However, I think the share price is dropping due to the negative news surrounding their CEO. But before we talk about the news surrounding their CEO, let's talk about Expedia's revenues. Expedia generates revenue in several ways, including travel bookings, earning commissions, and advertising. And in 2023, the company generated a record amount of revenue of $12.8 billion, and for the fourth quarter, they brought in $2.9 $9 billion, equating to a 10% year-over-year increase. So again, this is good news, not bad news. Their forecast even was pretty good, considering that they expect that their revenue will grow at around a 10% rate again throughout the year of 2024. We even got great news in regards to their earnings per share, to where they made a 145% jump in 2023 compared to what they brought in during 2022. Therefore, I don't think the share price is falling due to the company's financials because their financials were actually pretty solid. Instead, I believe it's the news surrounding their CEO, which is pushing their share price downwards. That means this company could actually have a strong rebound once they find a bottom. So listen to this. Out of nowhere, the CEO surprised investors by stepping down after only four years in his current position. In a recent letter to his employees, he basically said that he feels good with what he's accomplished so far and that Expedia is in a good place for long-term success. This message rubbed investors the wrong way because they think that something secretly happened that hasn't gotten out yet, but until we find out more, we can only speculate. However, for me personally, I still think this company is being sold for no good reason. The CEO stepping down should not cause this company to drop by around 17.78%. And if we pair this with good revenue results and great earnings per share growth, we know that this company will rebound in their share price as soon as it finds a bottom, so I'll keep you updated. More bad news comes from Cisco Systems, which 
which is currently laying off employees. Cisco is a network giant and they are currently planning a giant restructuring. And as they restructure their business, they want to lay off thousands of their employees. As of right now, the total number of employees that they plan to lay off has not been released yet. But we will most likely receive an update regarding these layoffs when the company reports their earnings on February 14th. I personally am not surprised about this move considering that a lot of other technology companies such as Nokia and Ericsson are also cutting thousands of jobs. We even saw several big technology firms such as Amazon, Alphabet, and Microsoft have all implemented layoffs in recent weeks, so it's no surprise to see Cisco also doing the same. For me, there is worse news than their layoffs, and that's the fact that Cisco had to cut their full year revenue and profit forecasts in the previous earnings call. So with this earnings call that's coming up on February 14th, I do not anticipate that this will be very positive. So if you are an investor in this company, please brace yourself for this upcoming earnings report. Now don't worry because we do have good news, and that would come in the form of Rivian, which is a startup electric vehicle company which currently trades for around $16.68. The share price of Rivian Automotive ticker symbol RIVN has recently been climbing steadily and I think there is future upside left in this company. We have seen a lot of trading volume happen in this company with around 57.77 million shares exchanging hands. For some context, the average three-year trading volume for this company is around 34.09 million. So considering that 57.77 million shares have recently exchanged hands, clearly something is happening here. On top of that, the new battery pack actually makes their vehicle cheaper. Considering that the new price point or entry price for the R1T and R1S is lowered by $3,100 each with this new battery pack. People can even save more money considering that this new battery pack qualifies the vehicle for for a federal tax credit of $3,750 on purchasing one of these vehicles. Therefore, someone who wants to buy one of Rivian's electric trucks could literally almost get $7,000 off the price tag, at least once we factor in this particular battery option and the federal tax credit. You should also be aware that Rivian is due to announce its quarterly results on February 21st. And we also know that there is a lot of excitement surrounding their next generation vehicle, codenamed the R2. And as of right now, the company has confirmed that March 7th is going to be the launch date for that vehicle, so that's why we are seeing their share price increase. In other news, Pepsi had an earnings report, and they increased their dividend by 7%. The share price of Pepsi recently fell after they released quarter 4 results to where the revenue came in at around $27.85 billion, and net income came in at around $1.3 billion. But even though the share price is falling right now, the company did say that they plan to raise its dividend by around 7% to $5.42 cents starting with its June payout. I personally hold a Pepsi stock and Coca-Cola stock in my portfolio, so I would highly recommend you look further into both of these companies to determine whether or not they are good investments for you. To round off the video, let's talk about the upcoming week and what you need to be paying attention to as an investor so you can trade off of the stock market volatility. On Monday, February 12th, SeaWorld Entertainment, ticker symbol S-E-A-S, -E ticker name Seas, will formally change its corporate name to United Parks and Resorts Inc. Also, their ticker symbol will change from SEAS to PRKS, so please be on the lookout for that, and this could actually cause a catalyst in their share price. Next, let's talk about Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, which is one of my all-time favorite companies to invest into, and they are expected to hold a business update event covering the future of Xbox. And then on Tuesday, February 13th, there are many notable companies which are going to release their earnings. Some of the companies which are releasing earnings on February 13th, which is a Tuesday, would include Coca-Cola, Shopify, Airbnb, Marriott International, Datadog, Upstart Holdings, Lyft, and a few others. Moving on to Wednesday, February 14th, we also have more earnings to look forward to. Like we said earlier, Cisco Systems is anticipated to release their earnings report, which I believe is going to be quite negative, but we also have Sony, Kraft Heinz, Twilio, and QuantumScape to look forward to. But the major event that I personally am going to be watching is Uber Technologies' Virtual Investor Update which I think is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst because in my personal opinion, Uber has really transformed themselves into a phenomenal growth company. And earnings season continues on Thursday, February 15th with very notable companies releasing earnings. 
Some of the companies which are releasing earnings on Thursday would include Applied Materials, Deere, Stellantis, DoorDash, Wendy's, and Coinbase, just to name a few. And the three events that I personally am going to be watching on Thursday would be Datadog's Investor Day, Ford Motors' appearance at the Wolf Research Global Auto Conference, and the IPO lockup and market standoff agreements, which were executed by Instacart's directors, officers, and holders of convertible shares, will officially expire. So my eyes are going to be on Instacart stock. And with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button for more videos just like this one. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.